All right, guys, I want to do a video uh, to just go over some ways that we can continue to keep improving the golf courses. Right now, our courses is more, definitely one of the best in western Kentucky. Uh, there are some little ways that we can improve it even, even more. Uh, one being the area right here, right next to the cart path, uh, mostly around the greens and the tee boxes. That's where there's a lot of high traffic area. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of these compaction areas from where the carts will come off the path. So this is a new cart path, but there's still room even on the old cart path for all four tires to be on that cart path. Uh, it's just natural tendency when you're driving a cart or even a car, when you come to a stop to pull to the side of the road or the cart path. But what happens when these tires get off the path, that's a lot of compaction uh, repeatedly, and it's gonna um, really reduce the grass in this area. So if we could keep those tires on the path uh, around the greens and tees, We'll, we'll have a lot cleaner area and a cleaner transition from uh, cart path to green and cart path to tee box. So another way that we can continue to improve our golf course is uh, on the, the teeing area on par threes. And, you know, here at Hopkinsville Country Club, we have five par threes. So that's a lot of iron shots off tee boxes. Uh, we also have small tee boxes. Uh, so that means a very concentrating hitting area. So we have these sand uh, boxes here. So whenever you see a divot, not just fixing yours, but taking that little extra step to fix someone else's too. So get you a scoop full, fill that divot, and you should have enough there to fill another one. Run your foot over that. So if we can fix not just our own divot, but multiple ones, then that's really gonna help clean this up to where we're not seeing a lot of these worn areas. So right now we are going through an airification. Um, one benefit of that is with the sand on the greens, it makes ball marks more visible. So, you know, with this transition from bent to Bermuda, it's harder to find your ball marks. But it is still important to fix them, even though you might not know if you made one or not. So if you can't seem to find yours, then try to fix someone else's. So if we could actually fix one ball mark of our own and an extra one, that's a huge step in keeping our greens in pristine condition. So when you find one, find that top edge, and push it inward. Don't push the bottom up. You find another, you walk past, you still got the tee in your hand. We continue to fix ball marks on these greens, our smaller greens that get a lot of shots into them that help keep our greens in really good condition. All right, here's another way we can continue to improve our golf course. Uh, right now, I'm, I've hit a bunker shot. So I've got my footprints. And this is where I hit my shot. Uh, I wanted a couple things I want to avoid here. Uh, one is walking in and out of the bunker on the high banks. Try to find the low side to walk in closest to your ball. Um, also, I want to try to walk through my footprints, how I got in. So I've hit my shot and I've got my footprints back out that way, the low side. I'm going to rake and try to move back out that way. That way I'm not using too much traffic here. A um, couple tips to rake. I'm going to push the sand away and then start moving it back as I rake. And we're trying to avoid the ridges in the bunker, the long rake marks, rake strokes, helps to avoid those ridges. I'm going to rake back out my footprints and try to rake anyone else's I see too.